Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. Oh. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, we thank you for tuning in today and taking time out of your schedule to join us on Evangelistic Outreach. We realize that many of you have a choice in uh, what program you want to watch and if you want to watch, and we thank you, and it means so much to us that you would watch us today, and we hope the sermon will be a blessing to you. And would you join us in prayers? We ask God's blessings over the broadcast today. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you so much for being so good to us. We could be here from now until all eternity and we'll never be able to properly thank you until we get to heaven for the many blessings you've bestowed on us. Lord, you've blessed us with friends. You've blessed us with, uh, with, with help and with strength. You've blessed us with healing power. And Lord, the miracles we have seen the past few weeks uh, is just uh, uh, unimaginable what you've been able to do. And Lord, we believe that you're gonna do great things even yet today. And Lord, for all these things, we will praise you and we will thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, we hope you enjoy this number and song. Before we get right into the message, we wanted to give you some details about the upcoming Come Alive Spring Camp Meeting. It'll be taking place March the 24th through the 28th. Brand new location this year at the Shelby High School in Shelby, Ohio. They've built brand new facilities there in Shelby, a beautiful auditorium, and we're very excited to be with hundreds of our friends for the Come Alive Spring Camp Meeting. Again, that's the 24th through the 28th of March. Service time is 7 p.m. nightly. 
There's no admission charge, and we are very honored to be the host evangelist this year, Calvin Ray and myself, and then we'll be welcoming some great singers in for the week as well. On Monday night, Mike Blanton and Evidence. On Tuesday night, JB and Barb Spencer. On Wednesday night, the Representatives Quartet. On Thursday night, the Primitive Quartet. And on Friday night, the Singing Cooks. So as you can tell, it's gonna be a great lineup of singers, and they also have a community choir that sings every night, a very special patriotic service at the middle of the week, a lot of things going on the 24th through the 28th of March for the Come Alive Spring Camp Meeting, the brand new Shelby High School in Shelby, Ohio. We're very excited to be going back this year. We thank Pastor Doug Tackett for all for the for putting this all together, getting the area pastors together. They've been praying, they've been seeking the face of God, and we're very excited to be up there. Again, that's March the 24th through the 28th at 7 o'clock each evening. If you need more information, please feel free to give us a call at 800-767-8713. And then as a way to say thank you for all that you've done for us uh, the past few weeks and, and your unfailing support and uh, undying love that has been there for us every step of the way, we wanted to make a very special gift offer available to you this month. We have two great preacher friends. We have a lot of preachers all over the country. They're dear friends of ours. And uh, we, we were with Chris Rumfeld and Pastor Mike McCoy in Tampa, Florida this year. And they preached some amazing messages. And we were able to get the footage of those messages. And we wanted to share those with you. Pastor Chris Rumfeld preaching an amazing message on when the power goes out. We shared that with you on our broadcast the past few weeks. And then Pastor Mike McCoy from Crossville, Tennessee, preaching on addicted. These two sermons are available on DVD or audio CD free of charge. And again, all you need to do is contact our office and we'll be sure to get a copy of that out to you. Our toll free number again is 800-767-8713. Our mailing address, Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio 45659. Or you can visit our website for more information at calvinevans.org. Well, speaking of the Come Alive Spring Camp meeting, uh, last year was uh, was one of those unforgettable meetings that we had there in Shelby, Ohio. Calvary preached a message on the altar and how we need to get back to using that altar of prayer and the importance of the altar. We want to finish that message today and we hope it's a blessing to you. Now here's Calvin Ray preaching on the altar. One of the fastest growing religions in the world is the Islamic religion. And don't tell me that you can't build a religion on commitment. They, they ask so much of their people and they have to sacrifice so much. And here we are with the true and living God, the best thing going, and we act like it's a sacrifice to come to church twice a week, three times a week. We say, boy, I'd like to have it like the good old days. You couldn't stand it. You couldn't stand it. My dad, when I was a boy, I'm glad there's several from down home that live up here now and in this meeting. My dad started one revival. They were looking at him to come to pastor a church. Him and a preacher friend of his decided they'd take night about preaching. Then a third preacher joined him with them. And he started the meeting on New Year's Eve. That was watch night service. They went till midnight, at least. At least. At least. <clears throat> They started on New Year's Eve. Do you know when they closed the revival? Easter Sunday night. 13 weeks. Every night, seven kids, mom would get us ready, mom would have dinner ready. All of those nights, it wasn't a question, are we going to church tonight? It wasn't a question of do you feel like going or not going? We were we were. Oh, bless God. We were on our way to revival. No wonder God gave revival because they were willing to commit to it. And today it's a sacrifice if we expect people to stay for Sunday school. I thank both of you for the amen. Amen. The altar was a place of priorities. We have gotten our priorities turned around. 
We've heard tonight how this nation needs revival, but I'm gonna tell you, we're not gonna have revival till we put God where he ought to be. He is in control. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We no longer call the shots. We submit ourselves to him. We're under the authority of God and the word of God and what God says to do. We have to do it. A place of priority is a place of prayer. was a place of parting. Something had to die. Something had to be given. They had to part with the sacrifice. By the way, the altar's a pretty good place to part with some things. It's a great place to part with your sin. Good place to come and bring your sin. But thank God you don't have to take your sin with you when you leave the altar. It's a good place to part with this self. We need to come to the point where our self is crucified to the living God and said, we're not going to live for ourselves. We're going to live for you, Lord. And it's no longer my wants, my desires, my wishes. It's what you want for me. It's a good place to part with your situations. Folks used to come and leave things on the altar. I told Brian last week in our home church, I don't care to tell you, in our home church, in two days, I met with three families, all of them having serious problems. Sunday night after church, I said, do you know, Brian, not a one of those three families were in church either service today, and they're all well. I know they're well, because I saw two of them going into restaurants to eat Sunday. And you wonder why you have so many problems. Now, I'm not living a problem-free life, but I'll tell you one thing. Thank God I know where to go when I have problems. I'm glad for godly wisdom. I'm glad for counsel. I'm glad for preachers. But in the end, when I reach the place that nobody else has the answer, I'm glad I can steal away somewhere at an altar of prayer, get a hold of the horns of the altar, lay it all down before God, and know that God will hear and answer my prayer. Some of you keep carrying those loads with you. What you ought to do tonight, you ought to come and say, I'm gonna give those unsaved kids to you, Lord. I'm gonna give those children that's drug addicted to you, Lord. I'm gonna give those problems. Lord, I can't do one thing to save my job, but I can give my life to you and have this consolation that I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Lord, I just submit every situation. I can't make my church grow. I can't make people be saved. I can't bring conviction to my life. Tell you what I'm gonna do, Lord. I'm gonna flood these altars tonight and use them for your glory. And I'm gonna part with it and say, Lord, I'm giving it to you. I'm gonna trust you with all of it. I remember hearing about a old saint of God stayed up every night worrying about something, worrying about something, worrying about something. And finally, one night reading in the Bible about how the Lord watches over the children of Israel. He's reading that wonderful psalm. I'll lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Then he got to that part where the Lord neither slumbers nor sleeps. He said, the more I thought about that, I thought, well, Lord, if you're staying awake, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and go to bed and let you take care of it. You reach the place where you either give it to God or you don't. Now, he'll let us carry our loads as long as we want to, but it's hard to see real revival come and be effective to our unsaved loved ones as long as we let the load be so heavy on us that we lose the joy of serving Jesus. Let me give you one more thing. I promised you I wouldn't keep you long. It is a place not only of priorities, a place of prayer, a place of parting, but it's also a place where the power of God fails. where the fire came down. They took four barrels, filled them up three times, 12 barrels of water. Now that doesn't mean a lot until you stop and think about it. They were in a drought. The prophet had prayed that it rained not and it hadn't rained. There was drought in the land and here he was. You know, it's a miracle they didn't kill him because he took the most valued possession there was and poured it out. To them it looked like it was a waste. 
There's people even right here tonight, people that'll come through these doors. They'll come and they'll say, you know, that meeting down there, all that time, all that money, all that work, that's a waste. It'll seem like that until your family member gets saved. Then it'll be worth every penny. Be worth it. <laughs> be worth every moment that somebody spent in prayer. It'll be worth it all to see your loved one get saved. It's all from the perspective that you look at it. And there's things that happen when we come to meet God in prayer. The power of God comes. Let me close with this. There was a gentleman that I'd tried to get to come to church for years and he refused to come. His son-in-law, he's in heaven now, his son-in-law's in heaven, but his son-in-law got a real burden for his father-in-law and he'd have me out there every little bit. His father-in-law lived in a little mobile home alongside of the creek and I'd go visit him and he'd say, you're a good fella. I'll watch you on TV. He said, but now I'm not coming to church. One day he calls me up and he said, I'm in the hospital and I'm going home today. They're letting me out this morning. He said, I'd like to meet you out at my house at two o'clock. So I got out there at two o'clock and knocked on the door of his little mobile home. He answered the door. And I went inside and sat down and he said, I don't know if I ever told you or not, Cal. He said, but I want to tell you. He said, I sure do like you. I said, well, I like you too. He said, you know, I thought I better not only tell you that I like you, but I'm going to tell you why I like you. And I said, well, I would appreciate that. That's kind of you. He said, I'll tell you why I like you. He said, you're loud. <laughs> said, see, I'm hard hearing. You're the only preacher on TV I can understand because you're loud. He said, thank you for preaching so hard. I can understand you. I said, well, that's kind. And I said, you know, I'm a little curious why you called me. And he said, well, this morning down there at the hospital, they pass out newspapers. They bring them into the patient's room there and give each one of them a newspaper every day if they want it. And he said, I picked the paper up and he said, I can hardly read. He said, but I can make out the names in the obituaries. And said, I looked and saw a familiar name and I realized that's my dear friend that died. He said, then I started thinking, Cal, they're all gone. I said, well, who's gone? He said, everybody I went to school with, went to school in a one-room school, said they're all gone. This old gentleman, I think he was about 96 then. He said, they're all gone. Everybody I went to school with, they're gone. All my brothers and sisters, all my family said, just got my son-in-law and daughter. Got a couple grandkids, that's it. Everybody else is gone. Everybody I work with said, they're all gone. And he said, do you know what that means? And I said, what's that? He said, I'm next. And he was serious. And he started to cry. And I said, yes, sir, you sure are. And I took him to the plan of salvation and he said, well, I thank you for your time. He said, but what I wanted to ask you, he said, I want you to pray real hard. He said, I'm going to come to church on Sunday and I'm going to get saved. And I said, don't put that off. You can get saved right now. And he got up real slow and he was so feeble. He walked over and he patted me on the head and he said, son, thank you for coming. I'll see you Sunday. Pray for me. And I said, don't put this off. And he said, no need to talk to me. I'll see you Sunday. And I said, what if you die between now and Sunday? And so help me, this is what he said. The Lord wouldn't do that to me. That's what he said. I said, our days are numbered. We don't know. He said, no. He said, I'm telling you, I'll be there Sunday. Man, immediately, I got a hold of everybody in the church. Pray that God spares his life. People would go and visit him. He'd meet him at the door and he'd say, I'll see you Sunday. Well, Sunday came. 15 minutes into the service, he wasn't there the back doors opened up and bless his heart, he came in, sat down, all he could do to get inside the church. I preached a short sermon, gave the invitation, down to the altar he came and I'll never forget when he got to the front, tears streaming down his face and he said, do you happen to have some strong fellas that can help me get down on my knees? And I said, well now, friend, you can stand right here or you can even sit right here on the front. No, sir. He said, I got to get down on my knees. And I said, now listen, you can't even bend your knees. 
And he said, I gotta get down on my knees. I looked over at a couple of the young men and I motioned them over. I said, he wants to bow. And he turned to them. And I remember what he said. He said, even if I yell out in pain, just hold me up until I get down. It'll take me a little while. You could hear that old man moaning all over that church and people weeping openly. Every one of us wanted to get down on our knees for him. He bowed down and he started praying the best prayer that he could. Oh God, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. A little while, the power of God fell. He started to clap his little hands together and he said, Oh, the peace, the wonderful peace. After a few moments, he needed to get up, so I motioned to him to help him get up. Seemed like it just took forever to get him up. I put my arm around him and I said, you know the Lord could have saved you standing right here. And he said, well, let me tell you something. He said, years ago when I was a young man, a young man, I went to an old-fashioned revival and the Spirit of God touched my heart. And I walked outside the doors and I looked up into heaven and I said, Lord, I will never go to church. I will never bow at an altar and I will never call out to you to save me. And he said, I'm so glad God is merciful. And he said, preacher, can I give you a word of advice? I said, yes, sir. He said, never tell God never. Laying down there in that hospital bed, he said, I told the Lord, Lord, if you spare my life, I'll go to church and I'll bow down at an altar and I'll ask you to come into my heart. I remember preaching his funeral. I'm so glad he didn't tell the Lord never. I'm glad that he come to an altar and found a place to pray and get it right with God. And by the way, I'm thankful that same God is right here tonight. And that's why you don't need to say never to God, but you need to come and say, Lord, I'm gonna surrender it all to you tonight, right here on this altar. I walked by the tomb of Buddha, looked inside and saw on, his bones, traveled on to see Mohammed, Bless you, still wrapped up in Then I journeyed to a garden where old Joseph left him lay the precious lamb God's own begotten was no i 
trust in things unseen, but just one step in his direction, then in love he Thank you so much for tuning in the program today. Just before we leave the air, I want to invite all of you to be sure to join Brian in a great revival all week long this coming week, Monday through Friday, at the Beach Fork Church, five miles west of Otway, Ohio, on State Route 348. My, what a tremendous church. In fact, it's Brian's home church that he grew up in. Of course, he's been with us at Rubyville for some time now as my associate, but I believe that you will be blessed beyond measure if you're able to attend the revival this morning. Monday through Friday night at the Beach Fork Church just west of Otway, Ohio. They're great, great people. They love to worship the Lord. You'll never be the same. If you've never been to Beach Fork, you'll leave a different person. You trust me. And they'll treat you with such kindness. So be sure to visit the revival all week long this week at Beach Fork Church. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Until next week at this same time, may God bless you and yours is our prayer. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Calvin Evans, Pedro, Ohio, 45659, or toll free at 800 767 8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org. Before it's too